Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with part 14, The Form of the Lodge of the Symbolism of Freemasonry by Albert G. Mackey. Chapter 13, The Form of the Lodge. In the last essay, I treated of that symbolism of the Masonic system which makes the Temple of Jerusalem the archetype of a lodge and in which, in consequence, all these symbols are referred to the connection of a speculative science with an operative art. I propose in the precinct to discourse of a higher and abstracter mode of symbolism, and it may be observed that, in coming to this topic, we arrive for the first time at that chain of resemblances which unites Freemasonry with the ancient systems of religion and which has given rise among Masonic writers to the names of pure and spurious Freemasonry. The pure Freemasonry being that system of philosophical religion which, coming through the line of the patriarchs, was eventually modified by influences exerted at the building of King Solomon's temple, and the spurious being the same system as it was altered and corrupted by the polytheism of the nations of heathendom. Dr. Oliver, in his first or preliminary lecture of his historical landmarks, very accurately describes the difference between the pure or primitive Freemasonry of the Noachites and the spurious Freemasonry of the heathens. As this abstractor mode of symbolism, if less peculiar to the Masonic system, is, however, far more interesting than the one which was treated in the previous essay because it is more philosophical. I propose to give an extended investigation of its character, and, in the first place, there is what may be called an elementary view of this abstractor symbolism, which seems almost to be a corollary from what has already been described in the preceding article. As each individual mason has been supposed to be a symbol of a spiritual temple, a temple not made with hands, eternal in heaven, the lodge or collected assemblage of these masons is adopted as a symbol of the world. The idea of the world as symbolically representing God's temple has been thus beautifully developed in a hymn by Nathaniel Parker Willis, written for the dedication of a church. The perfect world by Adam Trod was the first temple built by God. His fiat laid the cornerstone and heaved its pillars one by one. He hung its starry roof on high, the broad, illimitable sky. He spread its pavement, green and bright, and curtained it with morning light. The mountains in their places stood, the sea, the sky, and all was good. And when its first morning praises rang, the morning stars together sang, Lord, tis not ours to make thee see, and earth and sky a house for thee. But in thy sight our offering stands, a humbler temple made with hands. It is in the first degree of masonry, more practically, that this species of symbolism is developed. In its detail, it derives the characteristics of resemblance upon which it is founded, from the form, the supports, the ornaments, and general construction and internal organization of a lodge, in all of which the symbolic reference to the world is beautifully and consistently sustained. The form of a Masonic lodge is said to be a parallelogram, or oblong square, its greatest link being from east to west, its breadth from north to south, a square, a circle, a triangle, or any other form but that of an oblong square would be eminently incorrect and unmasonic because such a figure would not be an expression of the symbolic idea which is intended to be conveyed. The idea, says Dudley, that the earth is a level surface and of a square form is so likely to have been entertained by persons of little and limited observation that it may be justly supposed to have prevailed generally in the early ages of the world. Neology, page 7. Now, as the world is a globe or, to speak more accurately, an oblate spheroid, 
The attempt to make an oblong square its symbol would seem, at first view, to present insuperable difficulties, but the system of Masonic symbolism has stood the test of too long an experience to be easily found at fault, and therefore this very symbol furnishes a striking evidence of the antiquity of the order. At the Solomonic Error, the era of the building of the temple at Jerusalem, the world, it must be remembered, was supposed to have been very oblong form, which has been here symbolized. If, for instance, on a map of the world we should inscribe an oblong figure whose boundary lines would circumscribe and include just that portion which was known to be inhabited in the days of Solomon, these lines running a short distance north and south of the Mediterranean Sea and extending from Spain in the west to Asia Minor in the east, would form an oblong square including the southern shore of Europe, the northern shore of Africa, and the western district of Asia, the length of the parallelogram being about 60 degrees from east to west, and its breadth being about 20 degrees from north to south. The oblong square thus enclosed the whole of what was then supposed to be the habitable globe, would precisely represent what is symbolically said to be the form of the lodge, while the pillars of Hercules in the west, on each side of the Straits of Gades or Gibraltar, might appropriately be referred to the two pillars that stood at the porch of the temple. The quadrangular form of the earth is preserved in almost all the scriptural allusions that are made to it. Thus, Isaiah 11.12 says, The Lord shall gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And we find in the Apocalypse 29, the prophetic vision of four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. A Masonic Lodge is... Therefore, a symbol of the world. The form of the lodge ought to be a double cube as an expressive emblem of the powers of darkness and light in the creation. Oliver, Landmarks, page 135, note 37. This symbol is sometimes, by a very usual figure of speech, extended in its application and the world and the universe are made synonymous when the Lodge becomes, of course, a symbol of the universe. But in this case, the definition of the symbol is extended, and to the ideas of length and breadth are added those of height and depth, and the Lodge is said to assume the form of a double cube. The solid contents of the earth below and the expanse of the heavens above will then give the outline of the cube, and the whole creative universe will be included within the symbolic limits of a Masonic Lodge. Not the whole visible universe in its modern signification, as including solar systems upon solar systems, rolling in illimitable space, but in the more contracted view of the ancients, where the earth formed the floor and the sky the ceiling, to the vulgar and untaught eye. Says Dudley, the heaven or sky above appears to be coextensive with the earth and to take the same form, enclosing a cubical space of which the earth was the base, the heaven or sky, the upper surface. Neology 7. And it is to this notion of the universe that the Masonic symbol of the Lodge refers. By always remembering that the Lodge is the symbol, in its form and extent, of the world, we are enabled, readily and rationally, to explain many other symbols attached principally to the first degree, and we are enabled to collate and compare them with the similar symbols of other kindred institutions of antiquity. For it should be observed that this symbolism of the world, represented by a place of initiation, widely pervaded all the ancient rites and mysteries. It will, no doubt, be interesting to extend our investigations on this subject with a particular view to the method in which this symbolism of the world or the universe was developed, and some of the most prominent details. And for this purpose, I shall select the mystical explanation of the officers of the lodge, its covering, and a portion of its ornaments. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. 
And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.